welcome back for another Music Theory Bite. This video is the first in a series of videos about sequential progressions. Specifically, I'm going to be showing you how to sing and hear the circle of fifths progression. If that sounds like something you'd like to learn more about, then this is the video for you. Let's talk a little bit about what a sequence is. Sequences are very powerful forces in tonal music. A sequence is musical material that's repeated on a different pitch level. We can have melodic sequences where a melody just gets moved to a different pitch level and we hear the same shape, although it starts on a different scale degree. Or we can have harmonic sequences in which the chords move in the same general pattern. Oftentimes those two things happen simultaneously. We hear a melodic sequence which is supported by a harmonic sequence. I'll talk more about the theory of sequences in a different video, and you might want to check that out. But for now, our focus is going to be on singing the circle of fifths progression. The circle of fifths progression is a progression that shows up all over the place in tonal music. You hear it in commercial music all the time, you hear it in rock and roll, you hear it in classical music. It's a progression that is built around the idea of each chord is being succeeded by a chord that is a fifth below the previous chord. So if we were to start on a tonic chord, then we would move down a fifth to the subdominant or four chord, down another fifth to the subtonic or leading tone chord, the seven chord, down another fifth to the median chord, the three chord, down another fifth to the six chord or submedian chord, down another fifth to the supertonic or two chord, then down another fifth to the dominant or five chord, and then down a one more fifth to the tonic, the one chord. And it sounds like this if I played on the piano. And that should be a very familiar sounding type of structure. Now, in music theory classes, oftentimes we're asked to sing melodic representations of those, and oftentimes that consists of taking chord tones and arpeggiating through them. So I like to have my students learn a very simple arpeggiation of that harmonic progression. And it works like this. Oftentimes we'll start with a tonic chord in root position. One, three, five. And then what we'll do is we will move to a subdominant chord simply by moving the third and fifth up a step. One, four, six. That is what I call the sequential unit. Those two chords group together. And that's the pattern that we're going to be repeating on a different pitch level. So I take my sequential unit, one, three, five, one, four, six, and now I will move the whole thing down a step. Sev, two, four, sev, three, five. Take that sequential unit, move it down another step. Six, one, three, six, two, four. And now we're going to move it down one more step, but we're going to be on our dominant, which means we have to get back to our tonic. Five, seven, two, one. Now you'll notice that the circle of fifths progression follows what we call the three time rule. Once you repeat something three times, you need to break the pattern on the fourth time in order to not make it sound ridiculous. So the entire progression sounds like this. One, three, five, one, four, six, seven, two, four, seven, three, five, six, one, three, six, two, four, five, seven, two, one. And that is a very basic presentation of the circle of fifths progression. We can do the same progression in the minor mode, and it's going to work roughly the same way. Start with a minor tonic. One, three, five, and I'll move to my subdominant the same way, move my third and fifth up a step. One, four, six. Now I take that whole thing and move it down a step. Sev, two, four, sev, three, five. Now you might notice that I'm using the subtonic here rather than the leading tone. That seven chord is not really a dominant function chord, and we only raise the leading tone on dominant function. So what I've done here is I've kept it low because it's not moving to a one chord, it's moving to a three chord. I continue on to the six chord. 
Six one three six two four. Now the fourth iteration. I'm going to raise the leading tone because this is a dominant chord that's leading straight to tonic. Five seven two one. So the entire thing in its most basic form sounds like one three five one four six seven two four seven three five six one three six two four five seven two one the basic circle of fifths progression now what you should do is practice it in that way get to know that progression, memorize that progression that way. You should memorize the harmonic progression that goes into it, that is the chords, one, four, seven, three, six, two, five, one. That should just be a basic sentence that you can just say at any point if someone were to ask you what chords go into a circle of fifths progression. Now once you've learned it in its basic form, you can manipulate it by changing the order of the triads. One, three, five, six, four, one, seven, two, four, five, three, seven, six, one, three, four, two, six, five, seven, two, one. And there are dozens of ways that I can change the ordering of the chords to create a different type of melodic structure. I could also invert some of the chords. Three, five, one, four, six, one, two, four, seven, three, five, seven, one, three, six, two, four, six, seven, two, five, one. It's the exact same sequential unit. I've changed the inversion of the chords, and I've changed the ordering just a little bit. But it's still the same harmonic progression. Finally, another way that I like to teach this progression is by including sevenths on each of the chords. And I do this because this is a good entryway into some of the other structures that we're going to be studying later on in our music theory curriculum. And I do this one in a very specific way. That is, the sequential unit is still going to consist of two chords. And it's still going to be the same Roman numerals. Of course, we can stick a seventh on any chord without changing its fundamental function. So we're going to add a seventh to each of these. Our tonic seventh chord, a major seventh chord, is going to sound like three, one, five, seven. And now we're going to take that tendency tone, which is the seventh of the chord, and have it step down. Six, four, six, three. So you'll notice that I'm thinking in four, four here, and the fourth beat of every measure is the seventh of the chord, and all good chord sevenths have to resolve down by step. So that kind of gives me a placeholder. I know metrically the fourth beat of each measure is going to be the seventh of the chord, which has to resolve down to the third of the resolution chord. That's why I start this progression on scale degree three and not scale degree one. Three, one, five, seven, six, four, six, three. Now I take that whole thing, move it down a step. Two, seven, four, six, five, three, five, two. I do that again. One, six, three, five, four, two, four, one. One more time. Resolve it to tonic. Seven, five, two, four, three, two, one. Works the exact same way in minor. Three, one, five, seven, six, four, six, three, two, seven, four, six, five, three, five, two, one, six, three, five, four, two, four, one, seven, five, two, four, three, two, one. I could change that, of course, by manipulating the uh, orderings of the chords, those sorts of things. That's a good thing to do later on after you've learned the progression. So let's just review real quickly. Our circle of fifths progression consists of the chords 1, 4, 7, 3, 6, 2, 5, 1. We can see in a very basic presentation all the chords moving from bottom to top. We typically move from a root position chord to what we might think of as a second inversion chord by moving the third and the fifth up by step and then taking that two chord sequence that sequential unit and moving it down a step. So when you hear a circle of fifths progression, the calling card for that progression is melodic motion that seems to step down by step every time it repeats. 
There are dozens of examples of this all over the literature, so have your music theory teacher play one or two of them for you. Well, that does it for this video. As always, make sure you like it if you found it helpful. Leave constructive criticism if you uh, have any comments to leave below. And finally, make sure you subscribe to my channel for the latest Music Theory Bites as they become available. Until next time.